so this video I'm just going to show um, some of the various features on the custom screens for the Siemens 808. Um, the same programming language is used on Siemens 828 and 840, but there's some various differences and I haven't tested on any of those controls. So let's start with the warm-up. When you first install the install the screens, you're going to get this message telling you to install uh, to create a settings file. So we'll just go and create that. Um, I'm going to use Peter Betts's um, standard settings for this. I know on my machine, my finish location right in the center of the door is negative 204. I make that 4 and I make x minus negative 390. I make that 4 and I make that 290 based on my machine values. Um, on this simulator, I could set it to whatever. So this message will say it will override existing warm-up settings. In this case, we didn't have a file, so it's overriding nothing. But in the future, if you update any of these values and click OK, it will override it. So I'm going to click OK, and it saved my file. If I go back in here and I don't, I make some changes, but I actually don't want to save it, I can click Cancel. It won't save anything. Um, so let's just assume that I want to warm up all of my axis and the spindle and the last time I used my machine was yesterday and I want my Z move to be in the X minus Y minus location. Uh, so I click warm up, it tells me that I'm not in auto mode, so I change to auto mode, but I must press the warm up button again. It saves my last few settings, which is these ones here. And now I can press cycle start. So I get this message and in real life, your machine would have moved to the X minus Y minus location and asked you to verify that this position is safe to move uh, to the minus 300 um, position. So I click cycle start. And you can see that our axes are moving up and down. Um, so I'm just going to stop that. In our tool probe, um, we have our various different automated tool measurement programs down here. We also have the tool probe, uh, the tool setter calibration. So you must have your master tool as the currently active tool, which you can see here. I've got T1, D1, a length of this, and a radius of zero. Obviously, if you're doing your radius, you must have the radius of the master tool programmed in. Um, you move the master tool to about 10 mil above the stylus, and you put in a nominal stylus diameter. Um, once you've done all of the calibration programs, if you haven't done so previously, these values will show up here. Um, you can edit some of these, but I would, I'm not sure if you need to very often. Um, from there, um, you can then run the measurements um, with your tools. If you try and measure a radius or a length and radius and your radius isn't set, it won't let you through. But you can measure length with a radius of zero. In our work probe, which is included with the base plus probing package, we get this message saying that our probe type is not set. So the first time you come in here, you must tell, you must save these settings here. So the probe type just lets the 
programs know whether you're using a um, Renishaw, Pioneer, uh, Optical or M code on type or a um, manually activated probe such as the Drewtronics, which requires you to effectively hit the probe itself. So none of the programs will hit the probe for you. You need to do that, um, but you won't get any errors when the programs try to turn on a probe that is not going to turn on through using M code. These are the um, default settings um, from Pioneer. You could change the rapids up a little bit higher if you're a little bit keen, but for this, I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save that. So now that my um, probe settings are set, I can go and do all my calibrations, um, all of these calibration programs here. The You can do um, your eccentricity and radius together or just do one or the other. You can also do the vector type. So rather than measuring in four points, the vector type will measure at various angles around the, um, the ring gauge, which allows you to use the vector type measurements as well. So in our single point, um, we just have X minus Y minus Y X plus X minus Y plus Y minus and Z. This approach distance is a absolute figure. Don't put a negative in there. Um, and we also have this custom Z calculated. So you can measure at five different points across a across the face and you can see my previous video on how to use that. Um, these probe on and probe off here is if for some reason you want to turn the probe on or off um, outside of a program. But all these programs here will turn the probe off and turn the probe on for you um, as part of the programs. Here we have the boss and bore. So we have our probing of a boss, our probing of a bore, our boss and a Z value, our vector boss, our vector bore, and our vector boss with a Z value. So we put our nominal diameter here, our approach distance um, is here, and then our Z below the face. Uh, with our boss plus Z, we'll measure the Z first, and then this value here would be the dimension below that measured Z where we where we take the measurements. Our slot or boss is the same, but for square or rectangle type um, type features. So you can see that we've got the slot in X, the slot in Y, the boss in X, boss in Y, square boss, square boss with a Z, and our square pocket. We also have corners, so we've got all corners inside and outside. Uh, when probing an outside corner, you want to put the, the probe stylus approximately somewhere up here, and then you'll set X, you'll set Y, you'll set A and B, and then the machine will automatically probe um, about that corner and set your work coordinate system as this point here. Uh, at the moment for our angle, it's just for information. It doesn't change anything, um, but you can tell your your actual angle or your angular deviation. On our simulator and older machines, there's an issue with the font. Uh, with this larger font, it doesn't show everything. Uh, it doesn't show the entire word, but on the newer machines, I have a X720, so a 2020X7, and it, it does show um, the entire word. So this would say input and output. And the, again, you can probe in the X plus or the X minus, Y minus or Y plus. When installing 
your programs and your screens, you're going to get a folder um, to install in the NC area. So you would go to project, uh, program manager, and from your USB or some other location, um, you'll get a folder with custom and you copy custom into, into the NC area. This custom folder will include a whole heap of programs like this. And when you first run the settings, you'll get this additional config folder. You can see that I've now got these new files here from when I just created them. The files for the screens will require you to go through and set a password. So I've set my password. You then go into system data. You'll go into HMI data and on your machine, there'll be a folder here that says easy X language scripts and you'll copy all of the files um, given to you for the screens into that folder, at which time um, pressing the custom button will work like this. You don't have to reset your machine to show the custom screens. You just have to paste all the files into that folder. And for the moment, that is all of the programs. Um, if you're interested in these programs, you can head over to the website and have a look at them. Um, in the future, we've got some removal of fourth axis, um, uh, like buttons to, to set the machine data for when you remove or, or install the fourth axis on your machine. Um, some probing for fourth axis and potentially some uh, automatic automated um, tool changer type functions and perhaps a program to measure all of the tools in your carousel. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments or send us a message on the website.